Narratively and visually, these films are the essentials for any self-respecting cinephile. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies shown in film school. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're focusing on the influential motion pictures that are most often shown by film or media professors when discussing the craft of filmmaking. There's an old joke. Um, two elderly women are at a Catskill Mountain resort, <clears throat> and one of them says, boy, the food at this place is really terrible. The other one says, yeah, I know, and such small portions. Number 10, City Lights. Aside from being lauded for its technical precision, Charlie Chaplin's beloved silent film City Lights not only brings plenty of heart, but also essentially changed the movie-making industry. Chaplin's mastery of movement demonstrated that he had a keen understanding of the visual aesthetic necessary to incite laughs and engage the audience in his antics. And as the director, producer, and star, he was in a prime position to articulate that vision. <laughs> With its central love story featuring the iconic Tramp character seeking the affection of a blind woman, the film more than delivers on romance and clever gags. And by the finale of City Lights, Chaplin's proficiency as a filmmaker sets the stage for his magical moment as a performer, highlighting the importance of character development. Number 9. The Graduate Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> <laughs> While this Mike Nichols classic has lost some of its luster since the late 60s, it remains a definitive satire of its time. Starring Dustin Hoffman in his breakout role and Anne Bancroft as the alluring Mrs. Robinson, The Graduate mixes brilliant storytelling with refined direction. On paper, the inherent conflict jumps off the page as Benjamin Braddock falls for Elaine, the daughter of Mrs. Robinson. Can we do something? But given the overall character study and sly humor of the film, it stands up as a conversation starter on character motivation and viewer identification, especially when analyzing the introspective ending of the film. In other words, do you sympathize more with Benjamin or Mrs. Robinson? <laughs> Number 8. Mulholland Drive Mulholland Drive? That's where I was going. David Lynch's 1986 classic Blue Velvet is another film school essential, as his recurring themes pervade the unorthodox narrative, opening the viewer's mind to cinema's possibilities. Let's f I'll f anything that moves! <laughs> but in terms of 21st century filmmaking, Mulholland Drive strays heavily from the usual narratives of commercial films. You came to see if he's out there. To get rid of this god-awful feeling. Set in Los Angeles, Mulholland Drive offers a surreal take on the big city experience. Lynch relies less on rigid structuring and captures his audiences through mood and dreamlike imagery. This is all a tape recording. No, I banda, and yet, we hear a band. Touching on a mix of genres, particularly the film noir of Hollywood's past, Mulholland Drive requires patient viewing and doesn't provide easy answers for audiences. It's 6980 Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive. Number 7. The Godfather. We've known each other many years, but this is the first time you ever came to me for counsel for help. By the early 70s, the gangster genre had undergone various alterations, but no film had investigated a mob family quite like Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather. For a first-time viewer, the names Al Pacino and Marlon Brando have a certain effect, as most film students understand their pop culture relevance. But in terms of craft and the technique of constructing a film, The Godfather masterfully delivers throughout, in dialogue, performance, and increasing tension. This is business, not personal. They shot my father. Even the shooting of your father was business, not personal, Sonny. And at three hours long, it's a perfect example of how cinema may transcend length if the storytelling is tight. 
Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You can act like a man. What's the matter with you? Number six, Psycho. Norman Bates no longer exists. He only half existed to begin with. Known as the master of suspense, Alfred Hitchcock wasn't necessarily praised throughout the majority of his career. But as filmmaking auteurs paid closer attention to his work, the more admired he became. And so, a film like Psycho received increased attention for its collective brilliance beyond the infamous shower scene. In terms of plot, Psycho reveals a director fully aware of what buttons to push, with its leading lady getting killed in the first act. And the visuals and editing techniques manipulate the viewer even more. Last two days, I've been to so many motels, my eyes are bleary with neon, but you know this is the first place that looks like it's hiding from the world? It takes brilliant performers to sell each particular scene by building tension and mystery, showing that a proper understanding of directorial technique goes a long way. They'll see. They'll see and they'll know. And they'll say, why, she wouldn't even harm a fly. Number five, Raging Bull. I want you to meet a face. What? I want you to meet a face. Based on the life story of boxer Jake LaMotta, this film transcends preconceived notions about likable characters and masculinity, and earned Robert De Niro his second Oscar for his method acting approach to the titular character. Who's an animal? Your mother's an animal, you son of a bitch! A deeply layered character study, one doesn't have to identify with the lead to understand his influences on those around him. Director Martin Scorsese enlists a variety of visual techniques, inspired by his cinematic influences while executing his own unique vision. If you win, you win. If you lose, you still win. For some, Raging Bull may not be as affecting as 1976's Taxi Driver, yet it's a film that can be studied scene by scene and frame by frame. You never got me down, right? You hit me? You never got me down. Number four, Bicycle Thieves. <laughs> As Hollywood genres evolved and World War II came to a close, the Italian stripped cinema down to its core. Directed by Vittorio De Sica, Bicycle Thieves is arguably the most popular work of the neorealist movement, focusing heavily on modest human struggles. As a whole, the film was shot on location in Rome and used local actors, which lent weight to the simple yet heavily dramatic moments. The plot is humble. A man loses his bike and therefore loses his means to provide for his family. There's no visual trickery. There's no overt melodrama. It's a snapshot of life in late 1940s Italy, translated to the screen. Pero la quindicina buona. Number three, Seven Samurai. Akira Kurosawa is widely regarded as one of the best directors of all time, and his 1954 classic essentially portrayed the reluctant hero in a way that hadn't been done before. Kurosawa didn't just film the legendary actor Toshiro Mifune and the supporting cast on a single camera. He innovated by using several cameras to create a more chaotic feel. The script itself deserves respect, given the natural drama of seven samurai rising up against village bandits. But it's a film that zeroes in on all aspects of filmmaking. And so, Seven Samurai features a masterful director elevating his craft further and a filmmaker brilliantly aware of how to portray character motivation, Japanese history, and his own vision of filmmaking. So what you do? Number two, Breathless. Je voudrais penser à quelque chose et je n'arrive pas. François Truffaut may have kicked off the French New Wave with 1959's The 400 Blows, but Jean-Luc Godard legitimized the movement with Breathless. On se regarde les yeux dans les yeux et ça sert à rien. Originally conceptualized by Truffaut, the film thrives off of a rebellious spirit, a contrast to the existing French movie culture of the time. As a filmmaker, writer, and director, Godard threw accepted norms out the window, constructing a narrative according to his own personal ideals. 
Pourquoi vous êtes triste Parce que je suis triste. C'est idiot. Godard's cinematic philosophy, evidenced by his jump cuts and unconventional storytelling, inspired filmmakers for years to come. There's a natural cool to the characters in Breathless, and the directorial techniques fully shook up the system in 1960, ultimately changing how directors approached their craft. On va dormir? Oui. C'est triste le sommeil. On est forcé de se séparer. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. looking at you, kid. Number one, Citizen Kane. Rosebud. Decades after its original release, this Orson Welles production is widely regarded as the best film ever made. But like so many great films, Citizen Kane was dismissed early on, at least until a French critic shed new light on the innovative style and structure. Is that really your idea of how to run a newspaper? I don't know how to run a newspaper, Mr. Thatcher. I just try everything I can think of. Chronicling the life of a secluded business tycoon following his death, played by the then 25-year-old Wells, Citizen Kane influenced much of the film noir movement of the late 40s and 50s, as well as countless other films and genres. Given the specificity of the lighting and cinematography, storytelling motifs, and certainly the structural brilliance of the screenplay, Citizen Kane lives on as a masterclass on the art of filmmaking. Death came to Charles Foster Kane. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.